My name is Jimmy Parks. I'm a DRPH student at the College of Public Health and I've been asked to talk to you a little bit about agency theory and governance. I gave you an article by Eisenhart where she says that agency theory is directed at the agency relationship in which one party, the principal, delegates work to another, the agent, who performs that work. Now, the article goes on to talk about some of the assumptions and, and some of the problems with those relationships. I'm not interested in, in you learning all of those. You know, some people make whole careers out of that. So you don't have to read the whole thing. But I think what's, what's important, the author asks us to consider the application of principal agent structure to the world beyond uh, economics, which has a very narrow focus and some questionable assumptions about the nature of people and organizations. And so that's really what I want to do with, with in the next five minutes is not teach you all the nuances of principal agent theory, but just give you the language to apply to the things that we're going to talk about in this course. So I'm going to play around with some of these homemade icons to try to give you a sense for how I use these terms and how you might use these terms to talk about policy. Now in my examples, uh, you, you're going to see my bias and some of my assumptions are going to come through, but I ex fully expect you to question those, not just assume those. I kind of have to do that to tell, you know, to give my examples. But just look at how I apply the language of agency theory to a couple of problems. Now, I'm not trying to teach you anything about right and wrong or good and bad, but just some language for thinking about that as we go through these policies. Now, principles are the first term, right? Principles are people. Every individual is a principle. And then you have the environment that exists, and principles want to do something in or to the environment together. You know, if there's only two people, then we don't need an organization. We don't need an agent. Uh, these two principles just communicate to each other about what they do and what they want each other to do. But there's a lot more of us than two, and there's a lot of things we want to do. So we divide the labor up and we organize. We hire agents to do work for us. And these can be individual agents or groups of agents, so we call them agencies or organizations. So these guys all talk to each other and they decide to create an agent to work on something for them, you know, for their mutual benefit. I won't go into it now, but you'll want to think about how do principals pay agents and how do um, they make sure that the agent's doing the work that the, that the principals ask them to do. Principals have a dialogue about why they need an agent and what they want the agent to do. They decide he should go get food. Uh, more specifically, they decide that the agent should go pick apples, bring them back to the group, to the principals. They talk about whether they want green or red, yellow, you know, ripe or rotten, and all those combinations or whatever. But they also have to talk about how much we're going to give this agent for doing that. What's it going to cost us to get this agent to do that? Okay, and you get the idea, right? This could be picking apples or building bridges or putting up road signs, whatever. Whatever the principals come up with that they decide is worth the price. Well, one potential problem with this relationship is that the agent can go off and start working in their own best interest instead of the best interest of the group, right? You know, they get out there and in the apple patch and they decide, <laughs> grove, whatever, they decide that the biggest apples um, should go in their own pocket and they don't tell us about them or they start picking pecans for themselves, putting them in their pockets while they're supposed to be picking apples and they keep the pecans or get, do something else with them. So you kind of get the idea. But that's called an autonomous agent. That's an agent that acts in the interest of the agent itself or the agency or the organization instead of in the interest of the principals. You know, one of the problems with this, these agencies are made up of principals who, you know, while they're on the clock, so to speak, they're working on behalf of the agency, right? We compensate them for that because they're, they're sacrificing some of their individual interests as principals to do the work of the agency or the agent you know, for, for the rest of us. And since they become experts in that task and they have more control over what the agency does, since they're right there, then the agency has a tendency to reflect their interests more than the people that they represent if the principals don't do a good job of tr keeping track of what the agents are doing, right? And I think that comes down to dialogue, communication between the principals and the agent. Another potential problem is when principals create an agency and some of the principals start to have more influence, you know, like stronger ties, more communication or whatever, than other principals 
So what can happen is these three principals who don't think the agency was representing their interests very well decides, hey, we'll form our own agency uh, to represent us. And now, so now we have two agencies that are that have conflicting interests. So how do you resolve that? How do you justify that 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 you now have principals working against principals? That's an interesting, you know, sort of a problem with this relationship. Um, now that's real brief, but I hope you kind of get the gist of how I'm trying to use these terms to look at the way organizations relate to the people they represent and that sort of thing. And so what I'd like you to do is, you know, in all these situations in policy, ask who is the principal and who is the agent and how well do they communicate and represent like they're supposed to. Now one more complementary concept is governance. And I gave you an article from Stoker about governance. And again, you don't necessarily have to read it all, but the main point is that governance is more than the activities of government. It happens everywhere all the time. I mean, we govern ourselves around other principles, right? You know, we're polite. We don't say everything that comes into our mind <laughs> most of the time. We, if we do, we get in trouble. So we try to govern ourselves on that. But since there's a lot of principles, not just the two of us, then it becomes complicated. So we form agents like government to do some of the governing, do some of that governance for us. So I don't have to chase down everybody who speeds through my neighborhood and have a dialogue with them about how it's not in my best interest that they speed up and down my street. I delegate that authority to an agent, right, the government or police, to do that for me at some cost to me. But businesses are organizations too, and they use contracts to govern each other. Uh, some organizations govern government, you know, to keep an, an eye on government, make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do. Um, so you have all these agencies that govern each other, and then the principals are involved there. It gets really complicated, but I think the principal agent language can help you break that down and analyze some of these relationships. Now, Stoker's main point is that governance is not just something done by government, it's something that that's done everywhere. So so look for that. Look for how principals govern their agents, their organizations. In this class, you know, as these things come up, when we talk about the policy players or the special interest groups and those sort of things, think about who they represent, how well they're governed, and that sort of thing. Well, that was real quick. I hope we have some dialogue about this, and, you know, I'm open to emails and, and comments on how this went. But thanks for the opportunity.